Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we start, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Bashem Yahshua, Amen. Our readings for tonight are Deuteronomy 21, 10, 25 through 19. Prophets, Isaiah 52, 13 through 54, 10. Our Brit Shadesh is going to be Matthew 5, 31 through 32, Matthew 19, 3 through 12, Matthew 20, 23 through 32, Luke 23, 1 through 25, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5, 1 Corinthians 9, 4 through 18, and Galatians 3, 9 through 14. When you go out to war against your enemy and Yahweh, your Elohim gives you gives them into your hand and take and you take them captive. And you see among them the captives a beautiful woman, and you desire to take her to be your wife, and you bring her home to your house, and you shall never and you shall shave her head and pare her nails. And she shall take off the clothes in which she was captured, and she, sh and she shall remain in your house and lament her father and her mother a full month. After that you may go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. But if you no longer delight in her, you shall let her go where she wants. But you shall not sell her for money, nor shall you treat her as a slave since you have humiliated her. If a man has two wives, the one loved and the other unloved, and both the loved and the unloved have borne him children, and if the firstborn son belongs to the unloved, then on the day when he assigns his possessions as an inheritance to his sons, he may not treat the son of the loved as the firstborn in preference to the son of the unloved who is the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the first fruits of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. If a man is stubborn and if a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and though they discipline him, will not listen to them. Then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his, of his city at the gate of the place where he lives, and they shall say to the elders of his city, This, our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones, so that you shall purge the evil from your midst, and all Israel shall hear and fear. If a man has committed a crime punishable by death and he is put to death and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall bury him the same day. For a hanged man is, a, is cursed by Elohim. You shall not defile your land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you for an inheritance. You shall not see your brother's ox. Or his sheep going astray and ignore them. You shall take them back to your brother. And if he does not live near you. And you do not know where he is. Or who he is. You shall bring it home to your house. And it shall stay with you until your brother seeks it. Then you shall restore it to him. And you shall do the same with his donkey. Or with his garment. Or with any lost thing of your brother's. For, for which he loses and you find. You may not ignore it. You shall not see your brother's donkey or his ox fallen down by the way and ignore them. You shall help him to lift them up again. A woman shall not wear a man's garments, nor a ma shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to Yahweh your Elohim. If you come across a bird's nest in any tree or on the ground with young ones or eggs, 
and the mother sitting on the young or the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. You shall let the mother go, but the young you may take for yourself, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long. When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your roof, that you may not bring the guilt of blood upon your house, if anyone shall fall from it. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seeds, lest the whole yield be forfeited. The crop that you have sown and the yield of the vineyard you shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear cloth and wool and linen mixed together. You shall not make yourself tassels. You shall make yourself tassels on the four corners of your garments with which you cover yourself. If any man takes a wife and goes into her and then hates her and accuses her of misconduct and brings a bad name upon her, saying, I took this woman, and when I came near her, I did not find in her evidence of virginity. And when the father of the young woman and her mother sh shall take and bring out the evidence of her virginity to the elders of the city and the gate, and the father of the young woman shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man to marry. And he hates her. And behold, he has accused her of misconduct, saying, I did not find in your daughter evidence of virginity. And yet this evidence, this is the evidence of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloak before the elders of the city. And the elders of the city shall take the man and whip him. And they shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to the father of the young woman, because he has brought a bad name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife. He may not divorce her all of his days. But if the thing is true, that evidence of virginity was not found in the young woman, then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of the father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her to death with stones, because she has done an outrageous thing in Israel by whoring in her father's house. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. If a man meets a virgin who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her, if a man is found lying with the wife of another man, both of them shall die. The man who lay with the woman and the woman, so you shall purge the evil from Israel. If there is a betrothed virgin and, the, and a man meets her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry for help, though she was in the city, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. But if in the open country a man meets a young woman who is betrothed, and the man seizes her and lies with her, the only, then only the man who lay with her shall die. But you shall do nothing to the young woman. She has committed no offense punishable by death, for this case is like that of a man attacking, attacking and murdering his neighbor. Because he met her in the open country, and though the betrothed young woman cried for help, there was no one there to rescue her. If a man meets a virgin who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her, and they are found, then the man who lay with her shall go shall give to the father of the young woman fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife because he has violated her. He may not divorce her all of his days. A man shall not take his father's wife so that he does not uncover his father's nakedness. Those excluded from the assembly. None of those, none, no one whose testicles are crushed or whose male organ is cut off shall enter the assembly of Yahuwah. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of Yahuwah. Even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants may enter the assembly of Yahuwah. No Amorite, no Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of Yahuwah. Even to the fourth generation, or tenth generation. None of them may enter the assembly of Yahuwah forever, because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way. When you came out of Egypt, 
and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, from Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse you. But Yahweh your Elohim would not listen to Balaam, and said, Yahweh your Elohim turned the course into a blessing for you, because Yahweh your Elohim loved you. You shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an, Ar an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, because he, because you are a sojourner in his land. Children born to them in the third generation may enter the assembly of Yahuwah. When you are encamped against your enemies, you shall keep yourself from every evil thing. If any man among you becomes unclean because of nocturnal emissions, then he shall go outside the camp, and he shall not come inside the camp. But when evening comes, he shall bathe himself in water, and as the sun sets, he may come inside the camp. You shall have a place outside the camp. You shall go out to it, and you shall have a trowel with your tools. And when you sit down outside, you shall dig a hole with it, and turn back and cover your excrement. Because Yahweh your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore, your camp must be holy, so that he may not see anything indecent among you and turn away from you. Miscellaneous Laws You should not give up to his master a slave who has escaped from his ma master to you. He shall dwell with you in your midst, in the place that he has, shall choose within one of your towns, wherever it suits him, you shall not wrong him. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, and none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of a dog into the house of Yahweh your Elohim in payment for any vow, for both of those are an abomination to Yahweh your Elohim. You should not charge interest on loans to your brother, interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreign interest, but you may not charge your brother interest. <coughs> that Yahweh your Elohim may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. If you make a vow to Yahweh your Elohim, you should not delay fulfilling it, for Yahweh your Elohim will surely require it of you. And you will be guilty of sin. If you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what has passed your lips, for you have voluntarily vowed to Yahweh your Elohim what you have promised with your mouth. If you go into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in your bag. If you go into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you now shall not put a sickle to your neighbor's grain. Laws Concerning Divorce When a man takes a wife and marries her, if then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her and he writes her for a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of the house and she departs out of his house and if she goes and becomes another man's wife and then the latter man hates her and writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house or if the latter man dies who took her to be his wife then her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she has defiled, has been defiled. For that, in his, that is an abomination to Yahuwah, and you shall not bring sin upon the land that Yahuwah your Elohim has given you for an inheritance. Miscellaneous Laws When a man is newly married, he shall not go out with it army or be liable for any other public duty he shall be free at home one year to be happy with his wife for whom he has taken no one shall take a mill or an upper millstone in pledge for that would be taking a life in pledge if a man is found stealing one of his brothers of the people of Israel and he treats him as a slave or sells him then that thief shall die you shall purge the evil from your midst 
take care in case of leprous disease, to be very careful to do according to all that the Levitical priests shall direct you, as I commanded them. So you shall be careful to do. Remember that Yahweh your Elohim did what Yahweh your Elohim did to Miriam on the way as you came out of Egypt. When you make your neighbor a loan of any sort, you shall not go into his house to collect his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you have made the loan shall bring the pledge out to you. And if he is a poor man, you shall not sleep in his pledge. You shall restore to him the pledges as the sun sets, and he may sleep in his cloak and bless you, and it shall be righteousness for you before Yahweh your Elohim. You shall not oppress the the worker who is poor and needy whether he is one of your brothers or one of the sojourners who are in your land within your towns if you shall give him his wages on the same day before the sun sets for he is poor and counts on it lest he cry against you and Yahuwah against you to Yahuwah and you be guilty of sin fathers shall not be put to death because of their children nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers each one shall be put to death because of his own sin you shall not pervert the justice due to the sojourner or to the fatherless or take a widow's, go widow's garment and pledge but you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt and Yahweh your Elohim redeemed you from there Therefore, I command you to do this. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheath in the field, you shall not go back for it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that Yahweh your Elohim may bless you in all the works of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterwards. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. <coughs> you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, therefore I command you to do this. If there is a dispute between men, and they come into the court, and the judge decides between them, acquitting the innocent and condemning the guilty, then if the guilty man deserves to be beaten, the judge shall cause him to lie down and be beaten in the presence of in his presence with a number of stripes in proportion to his offense. Forty stripes may be given him, but not more, lest if one shall go on to beat him with more stripes than these, your brother shall be degraded in your sight. You shall not muzzle an ox when it is treading out the grain. Laws concerning leveret marriage. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not, not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband shall go into her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother. That his name may not be blotted out of Israel, and if the man does not wish to take his brother's wife, when his brother's wife shall, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gates to the elders and say, "My husband, husband's brother refuses to perpetuate his brother's name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother to me." Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. And if he persists, I do not wish to take her, then his brother's wife shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, and pull his sandal off his foot, and spit in his face. And she shall answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. And the name of his house shall be called in Israel the house of him who had his sandal pulled off. Miscellaneous Laws When men fight with one another and the wife of the one who draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of him who is beating him and puts 
out her hand and seizes him by the private parts, and you shall cut off her hand, your eye shall not have no pity. You shall not have in your bag two kinds of weights, a large and a small. You shall not have in your house two kinds of measures, a large and a small. A fool and a fair. Weight you shall have. A fool and a fair measure you shall have. That your days be long in the land that Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. For all who do such things and all who act dishonestly are an abomination to Yahweh your Elohim. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you came out of Egypt. How he attacked you on the way when you were faint and weary and cut off your tail. Those who were lagging behind you and he did not fear Elohim. Therefore, you, when, Elo, when Yahweh your Elohim has given you rest from all your enemies around you. And the land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you for an inheritance to possess. You shall blot out the memories of Amalek from under the heavens. You shall not forget. Isaiah 53. 13 through 54 10 he was pierced for our transgressions behold my servant shall act wisely he shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted as many were astonished at you his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind so shall he sprinkle many nations kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told them they shall see. And that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us, and to whom has the army of Yahuwah been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He has no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken. Smitten with, smitten by Elohim and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions and was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray; we have turned every one to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation who concerned that he is cut off out of the land of the living stricken for the transgressions of my people and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death although he has done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth yet it was the will of Yahuwah to crush him he has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. <coughs> he shall prolong his days. The will of Yahuwah shall prosper in his, in his land. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I'll divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death. It was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. Covenant of Peace Sing, O barren one, who did not bear, break forth into song and cry aloud, 
You who have not been in labor, for the children of the desolate one will be more than the child, children of one who is married, says Yahweh. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will be people, and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood will be remembered no more. For your Maker is your husband. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The Elohim of the whole earth he is called, for Yahweh has called you. Like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your Elohim. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you in overflowing anger. For a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says Yahweh your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah shall be no more shall no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says Yahweh, who has compassion on you. Matthew 5, 31-32 it was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Matthew 19.3-12 through 12. And Pharisees came up to him and testified, tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's life, wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore Elohim has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and send her away? He said to them, Because of your hard, the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such... If the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there, for, for there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, that the one who is able to receive it receive it. Matthew twenty two twenty three through thirty two <coughs> Sadducees asked about the resurrection. The same day Sadducees came to him, he said that there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question saying, Teacher, Moses said if a man dies having no children his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died and had no offspring left. His wife, no offspring left his wife to his brother. So to the second and the third, down to the seventh, after them all, the woman died. And the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. But Yahweh answered him, You are all wrong, because you know neither the scriptures 
nor the power of Elohim. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by Elohim? I am Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. He is not Elohim of the dead, but of the living. Luke 23, 1-25 Yeshua before Pilate Then the whole company of them arose and brought him from Pilate brought him before Pilate and they began to accuse him saying we found this man misleading our nation and forbidding to give us tribute to Caesar and saying that himself as that he himself is Hamashiach a king and Pilate asked him are you king of the Jews and he answered him you have said so then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowds I find no guilt in this man but they were urgent saying he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judah from Galilee even to this place Yahshua Yeshua before Herod when Pilate heard of this he asked whether the man was a Galilean and when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction he sent him over to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at the time when Herod saw Yeshua he was very glad for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him and he was hoping to see some sign done by him so he questioned him at some length but he made no answer the chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him they then arraying him in splendid clothing, they sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after, him, after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any charges against him. Neither did Herod. For he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. Pilate delivers Yeshua to be crucified. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release us to Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder Pilate addressed them once more desiring to release Yeshua but they kept shouting crucify him crucify him a third time he said to them why what evil has he done I found him in him no guilt deserving death I will therefore punish and release him but they were urgent demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified and their pr voices prevailed so Pilate decided that their demand shall be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder for whom they asked. And he delivered Yeshua over to their will. One Corinthians five one through five. Sexual immorality defiles the church. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans for a man has his father's wife and you are arrogant ought you not rather to mourn let him who has done this be removed from among you for though absent in body I am present in spirit and as if present I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing when you are assembled in the name of the Lord Yeshua and my spirit is present with the power of the Lord Yeshua. You will deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Corinthians 9, 4 through 18.
Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living, who serves as a soldier to his own expense, at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruits? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. It is for the oxen that Elohim is concerned. Does he not certainly speak for our sake? It was written for our sake, because the plowman should plow in hope, and the thresher shall thresh, thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, it is too, too much if we reap material things from you. Is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of his right, of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of gospel of Hamashiach. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. But I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing these things to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of my ground for boasting. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me, even if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I will have reward. But if I, if not my own will, I am still entrusted, entrusted with stewardship. What then is my reward, that in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel? Galatians 3, 9-14 So then, those who are of faith are blessed, along with Abraham, a man of faith. The righteous shall live by faith. For all who rely on works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. Now is it evident that no one is justified before Elohim by the law, the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith, rather the one who does them shall live by them. Hamashiach redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Yahshua, Hamashiach, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. That concludes tonight's Torah portion. I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Bashem Yahashua. Amen.